Well, hello everyone, JW here, and welcome to the very first new adventure on the channel. We are in the lovely little parish village of Dunswell in England, United Kingdom, and I've received a letter from Leslie Harrington of the uh, Dunswell Parish Council, so we'll see what she has to say. Have a look. Dear Mr W, my name is Leslie Harrington, Mayor of the Parish Village of Dunswell. You may recall that I contacted you a few months ago regarding the creation of a wildlife corridor and pollinator garden, which you completed in conjunction with your organisation, the Dunswell Zoological Society and Dunswell Parish Council. The wildlife corridor and the pollinator garden have been a huge success, garnering the village nationwide attention and more importantly, providing a safe and natural space for our native wildlife to live and thrive. We've already recorded seven butterfly species, eight bird species, and 12 mammal species using these areas on a day-to-day -day basis. With the success of these projects under your leadership, I would like to offer you the opportunity, unlike any other, the village of Dunswell has a small animal education centre near the East Lake. The appropriately named East Lake Animal Education Centre began as a popular addition to the village, drawing in much needed tourism to businesses within the village and raising awareness for the conservation welfare of both native and exotic animal species. Unfortunately, as the years have ticked by, visitor numbers have dwindled and interest has wavered. The previous owners sold the site to the council a few months ago. We've been trying to bring the site back up to the standard for both the animals and the visitors, as well as bringing in a few more exotic species. After discussing this matter at the local council meetings, we unanimously agreed that you were the best candidate to run this facility on behalf of the council. Should you accept this position, the council will allocate you a budget to improve and expand the facility and bring it up to your high standards. Should the site prove profitable under your leadership, we would be willing to discuss your company purchasing some farmer farm pastures and scrubland next to the site of the wildlife corridor and pollinator garden, as well as land directly bordering East Lake Park but I'm getting ahead of myself. First things first, the site in question. The site in question is small and needs many renovations and updates. Additionally, the site is already home to 25 species that will need to be cared for and housed suitably. Visitors will need to be educated and have their needs met and rate the centre favourably with three star reviews or better. I will await your reply and hope to see you down at the centre shortly. Yours sincerely, Leslie Harrington, Mayor of Dunswell, Chair of the Parish Council. So, as you can see on screen, we are now looking at that pollinator garden and wildlife corridor. Let's have a look at what myself and my company, the Dunswell Zoological Society, managed to do. So we opened up the pond. This was completely overgrown. Opened it up, installed some lovely, eco-friendly uh, insect houses made from recycled materials, of course. We did put a walkway through, it doesn't lead anywhere at the moment, that's in anticipation that this area is going to be opened up to the public. And then we've just got lovely swathes of colour for pollinating insects. So we've got these tall golden rods, great for any insect really, but it's also nice and thick and vegetated, so we've got lots of ground cover going on there as well. Got lovely rocks and uh, small flowers for the smaller pollinators so they're not competing against any of the bigger pollinators. Again, eco-friendly insect housing. Got trees. Got some nice open areas as well because insects need some open areas. Tree stumps, just all the different habitats you could possibly need as a pollinating insect. Nice lavender sort of waterfall effect there, it's spilling over the top and coming down and then it of course leads back into this scrubland sort of area and then the wildlife corridor great for rabbits and deer and badgers and foxes and owls and stuff like that it's very easily navigable again Lots of insect housing in this area too. It's definitely more green than flowery over here. <laughs> and again, some nice open areas for grazing and 
rabbits to munch on and stuff like that. And then again, it becomes slightly more built up as we go along the corridor and then widens back out until we reach the end where it narrows back down sort of past this bridge here. Narrows right back down past the parish and then it sort of expands right near this little crossing here and that is the wildlife corridor and pollinator garden that I worked on with my company the Dunswell Zoological Society and of course the Dunswell Parish Council so we also have the wildlife corridor extending up here with a fence to stop any creatures from trying to cross the road and getting squished by careless humans. Again, the terrain sort of drives all the animals downwards anyway, so that should be fine. And there we have it. So this offer of the East Lake Animal Education Centre. Let's go check what Leslie was talking about and I will rejoin you when we've travelled to that centre. So guys, I think we've found the spot. This looks like the East Lake Animal Education Centre just over here. So let's go and have a look. So we'll follow this path down and... Ooh, would you look at that? Look at that view. This must be the East Lake. Wow. Massive. <laughs> it's absolutely huge for a lake. Wow, okay. Oh, there's a member of staff. So we must be getting close. And this looks like the place just here. Peeking. It's, uh, only just peeking through the trees. It's very hidden away. And there we have the East Lake Animal Education Centre. Let's hop on in and have a look at what we're dealing with, shall we? So already we've got some um, empty shops, not a good site particularly, and then very basic fencing and enclosure designs and stuff like that. Let's just see what we're dealing with. This is obviously a fallow deer, got a doll sheep, reindeer. Seems to be it in this enclosure. It's a pretty big enclosure, though. Give them that much. <laughs> Here, this definitely looks like some kind of aviary or primate house. Probably primates, given the holes on the ground. Let's see if we can spot anything, shall we? What are we looking at? Ah. We've got some ring-tailed lemurs down here. Wonderful. Bit of empty space here, right? Some nice border planting around the back. Nice wooden fence coming up here. Nice and sturdy. Got some camels. Three camels and an emu, by the looks of things. Pretty odd mix, but a standard enclosure nonetheless. What we got here? Some sort of pool. Penguins. Looking a bit barren, this habitat. What's in this one? We've got meerkats here. We'll get over to the greenhouse in just a second. Just want to see what's in this one. Wow, quite a lot actually. So we've got llamas. And quite possibly the most terrifying Suffolk sheep. Yeah, Suffolk sheep. I have ever seen in my life. 
Again, an odd mix, but a decent enclosure nonetheless. So we'll come round this path. Plenty of room for expansion and redoing habitats, that's always a good thing. Got some tortoises here. Some Aldabra tortoises. Tortoise. Oh, nice lucky greenhouse there. So go through the doors. What we got in here? Ooh, a spider. Ooh, no. What spider is it? Oh god, a glide fed eater. Well, I'm arachnophobic, so we'll leave the spiders to the keepers. <laughs> what we got in here? Oh, is that it? No, it's a yellow flower. That's it, though. Uh, scorpion. Giant desert hairy scorpion. Any more for any more? Got two up here. So what's in this one? Golden poison frog. Their exhibit's not particularly suitable. There they are, just on the side there. Just there. <laughs> and then this one. Oh, we can see these already. These are the terrapins. Diamondback terrapins. Wonderful. Right. Nice looking greenhouse, must be said. Not much needs doing in here. So we'll follow the path around the Aldabra enclosure. And this one in front of us looks pretty packed. What we got? Wow. So we've got uh, Bennett's Wallabies. Yep. Indian Peafowl. And alpacas. Odd mix, but uh, whatever floats your boat. <laughs> and the path forks off into two this way. Uh, but we just end up back at this habitat over here. Which looks like a farm. Oh yes, it's wow, there are a lot of animals here, right. I mean, Leslie did say 25 species, so what are we dealing with? Miniature donkey. An alpine goat. Eastern wild turkey. A merino sheep. A boa goat. Rhode Island red chicken. What are you? Also a boa girl. A large white pig. Is there anything else? Is that it? It looks like it's it. So that is it. Um, th there is a lot over here as well, but it's. As you can see it's still quite densely planted. We'll work our way through that later on. No, I think I'm going to accept Leslie's offer. Let's head back to the entrance and see what she says when I tell her that I've accepted this position. So I've accepted the position and I've just received a response from Leslie. Let's see what she has to say. Dear Mr. W, congratulations on accepting your position as Executive Collections Manager for Dunswall's Department of Environment and Wildlife. As I'm sure you will have noticed by now, the Animal Centre is in a pretty sorry state and no doubt you'll be getting to work as soon as possible. The Parish Council has agreed to set aside £600,000 for the renovation and redevelopment of the East Lake Animal Education Centre. In case you haven't catalogued all the species already, the centre currently houses five alpine goats, one male, four females, five boa goats, one male, four females, four eastern wild turkey, one male, three females, two domestic white pigs, two females, four alpacas, two males, two females, six merino sheep, six females, three miniature donkeys, one male and two females, six Rhode Island red chickens, one male, five females, four Suffolk sheep, four females, six doll sheep, one male, five females, seven llamas, seven females, three Bactrian camels, three females, eight African penguins, three males, five females, one emu, female, four Aldabra tortoises, one male, three females, 
eight Indian peafowl, three males, five females, seven Bennett wallaby, one male, six females, 11 meerkats, three males, eight females, four reindeer, one male, three females, six ring-tailed lemur, one male, five females, three goliath bird eaters, one male, two females, eight golden poison frogs, four males, four females, eight European fallow deer, one male, seven females, four diamondback terrapins, two males, two females, and three giant desert hairy scorpions, one male and two females. I would imagine that this is more than enough for you to work with for the time being. I'm no expert, but I would imagine that all the animals require more space, more enrichment, their needs addressing more suitable terrain and foliage, and perhaps larger social groups. Again, don't forget that we need to be getting three star reviews or greater, and more importantly, generating a profit. The more money coming into the center, the better it is for you, the animals, and for the village. Success is integral. Don't forget to enjoy the view whilst you're on site. That could belong to you pretty soon. Yours sincerely, Leslie Harrington, Mayor of Dunswell, Chair of Parish Council. Yes, so I am going to get stuck in. So we're going to hit play. First of all, I think we need to open the air. Uh, yep. Protesters have arrived. <laughs> that was pretty quick. Let's go check our animal needs. Right, so the penguins have issues. Social space. So they don't have enough deep diving. Not a problem. So let's drain the water. Lower this. I think that's pretty, uh, let's come up a little bit. Put that in. This obviously needs to then. Down a little bit more. Go down to do this. It has. So, beating them. Yep, that's just done nothing essentially. So we'll come back to the penguin habitat. I think can get them a little bit more soil now. Education added to them as well. Got a 
notification from no donation boxes. Very aware. Just add some enrichment to these little critters. They all need education added to them as well. We'll come back to that. Let's go check on our meerkats. What's this? No donation boxes and that's the penguins. We'll deal with the penguins uh, between now and the next episode. So our meerkats have just been fed. So, let's see. It's just enrichment they need. So... What we can afford. Termite mount. And a tennis ball. And a bamboo feeder. <laughs> we'll uh, get back to the penguins. They of course need a deeper pool. What we got with our emu. Uh, so the emu needs more soil. Not a problem. Can just soil it up over here and it needs more sand well we have sand here so that's fine and there we go and then they need an enrichment which is also bringing up lima um, Slow feeder and that a patch as well. Absolutely fine. Uh, camels need the same. Uh, what do they need most? Food enrichment. Small barrel. Pop that back here. Raising ball. Pop that ball. And there we go. Terrain. Needs more rock and less short grass. But we need some grass for the emu. So pop some rock around the house. And that should rectify. Their terrain is really not suitable for them. Might mean they end up getting their own habitat. We'll deal with that next time. Um, what about the llamas? How are they doing? Enrichment. Oh, they need some long grass. Quite a fair bit of long grass as well, by the looks of things. Long grass. There we go. And enrichment for the llama. 
pretty much the same as the camel. Grazing ball and small barrel. And I still need more. Another grazing feeder. And another grazing ball. Bloody hell, I still need more. <laughs> Then we'll uh, do another barrel feeder. There we go. What about our sheep? They need toy. Playing with the grab ball. Because the are modded, so I need to work out what rig I use. North America and Europe. Is it the. Priced. Fantastic. Let's bump that up to an eight. And that up to a seven. Ah. We've already got two and a half stars. Animal rating of four and a half. Guest happiness is pretty much five. We do need more. We're losing profit considerably though. Underpriced. Blah 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 blah. Right. Righty, righty, right. So, I think that's going to do it for this episode. My plans between this episode and the next episode. Let's just check how these lemurs are doing, because I am moderately aware. So their enrichment is abysmal across the board. Their terrain is not ideal either. Space and climbing is absolutely fine. So, next episode, I will have done the Lima habitat completely redone. I will have redone the penguin habitat because that, that's our main cause of concern at the moment for these guys. Are there enrichments through the floor as well? Right, let's see if we can do anything with their enrichment. African penguin. In. And a frozen block of fish. Yeah, look at them waddle. They're real cute. And a rubber duck. And there we go. Yeah, we'll, we'll put another one of them in. And a curio bottle, maybe. Oh, bubble machine. We'll do a bubble machine. Yeah. So we need to increase the amount of deep diving space for our penguins. So, by the next episode then, I will have done... My apologies there, guys. So, I'll have redone the lima hab make use of this empty space back here as well get rid of this awful concrete accommodation complex because it's just not suitable for the lemurs at all um probably improve the guest services in this area bins and benches and stuff penguins obviously um I'm thinking we extend the greenhouse along here 
and have the Aldabras inside. Just because we are in England and it may be 26 degrees at the moment according to this but it can get pretty nippy so they would want to be inside preferably so I'm thinking we uh, extend the greenhouse to incorporate this area oh all of a sudden the uh, the, the penguin things disappeared the space is still an issue yet yeah. But it's just disappeared from the um, notifications thing. So we just need to give them some deep water, I think, and then they'll be all right. Um, and then within the episode next time, we'll probably do the alpacas, wallabies, and peafowl, which is a very odd mix. I'm thinking we move the alpacas into half of the llama hab, and then we split this in half. We have peafowl and wallaby. Oh, we could maybe stick the peafowl in this little section here behind the greenhouse. Yeah, I think we'll do that actually. Peafowl in here. We'll sort of half this and make it for wallabies. Half this. Half for llamas, half for alpacas. Move the sheep into the farm area. And then we'll probably discuss what we're going to do with the rest of this place to bring it up to our very high standards. So with that said, I think I've waffled on for long enough. Thank you very much for watching. If you have enjoyed, please remember to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. It really helps me out. And of course, you wouldn't want to miss an episode of the East Lake Animal Education Centre revamp. I've been JW. You can find me on Instagram at JW underscore YT. I shall see you all shortly for the second episode. Thank you very much for watching. Stay safe and bye-bye for now.